Hi, I'm Linda Celestin. This is a video about the making of this painting that I'm sitting in front of. I decided to add some commentary to my painting videos because I thought people might be curious to know all the decisions that go into the making of an abstract painting. This painting is a little different than my normal style, so I struggled a lot with the different decisions along the way. I was really missing seeing texture in my work, so I built up a lot of texture and then I had to try to figure out how to pull the painting together. So I'm gonna talk you through every step and explain the tools and the techniques that I use in this painting that I've titled Blue Like Me. I started out with airbrush medium that I poured onto the canvas. I'm using a gessoed canvas and then I poured my paint into that. Here I'm adding some ink and just getting it really fluid. I usually start my paintings with a pour. This one definitely went a different direction. So I'm gonna kind of just talk you through my thought process. I use a lot of airbrush medium in the beginning to get the pores really fluid. And you know, you just have to break the ice and get something on that white canvas. This is silver paint and black ink. This was actually kind of cool looking. And what happened is I went away for a week. I went to London and I think I was really inspired by what I saw in London as far as street art. So I mixed this color and spread my paint with the squeegee. Using a squeegee in my painting is kind of new for me, but I'm really enjoying it. And if you're interested, you can check out my video about scrape painting where I talk about some other supplies that you can use to create these um, textures with scraping. So you can see I really enjoyed working with this squeegee and end up covering up most of my pore, which is a little depressing. Okay, so next I took some golden fluid acrylic in black and a big round brush. And I'm creating this um, pattern that has sort of come up in my painted papers and in my printmaking. So it's the first time I'm using a brush in years on my painting. So if you've looked at my other videos, they're mostly pores. So I'm just kind of having fun with seeing what this can do. And eventually I want it to not be quite as neat as it's coming out. And I get some more paint on the brush and let it drip. The fluid acrylics are really fun to work with. It's kind of the consistency of ink, but I'm, most, I'm really surprised at the coverage that you get. So here I just load my brush and place it somewhere to squeeze out some of the paint to get drips.
So I always let my layers dry. So everything is dry. And now I'm gonna use a mono printing technique. This paper is kind of like a heavy tracing paper, but you can use any paper that you have. Um, newsprint, um, wax paper, craft paper, you know, like a roll of brown craft paper would work. And I paint on it and then flip it over. You wanna work kind of quickly and, you know, use some pressure on the back to transfer the paint to my painting. This also is something kind of new to be using in my paintings. I have a mono printing um, video where I've done mono printing with kids for years and years and I've used it a lot in my abstract acrylic paint and papers. So it was kind of fun to see what it would do here. It really softened the black and I really love the texture. So I mixed some silver paint with airbrush medium, but I actually left this mixture a little bit thick. You can see later I add some airbrush medium to it to try to get it to move, but I really was looking for a little bit of texture. I didn't want it to be too thin down. So I let that dry flat before I stand it up to look at it and see where I am and think about what I think it needs. I really liked it at this stage, but it just didn't feel finished. It didn't feel like it had enough depth. It just felt like a little flimsy. I wanted the layers to interact a little bit more, so I got my black out and brought some of that black to the forefront. This creates what's called push-pull. So you're seeing those black forms under the white and behind the silver. And then when I put some on top of those two layers, then they then you kind of go back and forth. It's it's letting you enter, and then it's bringing you back to the foreground. When I'm watching myself work here, I always feel like I don't know when to stop. I think that's one of the hardest things, and I never want to stop too soon. I don't want to be afraid. So usually, when I finish a layer, I pretty much don't like it and that's what keeps me going forward. So I pretty much have thought to myself, wow, you went too far, you made a mistake. So, but like I said, I don't wanna be um, too timid. I felt the color story was a little soft, a little quiet. Um, and I was looking for something that would contrast with this light turquoise. And I came up with this maroon color, which, you know, I thought was gonna solve all the problems of the painting. I'm painting these rectangles that are going against the direction of the other patterns. So trying to create a little bit of tension. Also, this idea of that layer being in front of those other layers. So I think I got a little nervous thinking that it was feeling a bit jarring. So I end up scraping some of the paint off in to let that pattern come through again.
I'm just using a dollar store spatula here. They make special artist tools called wide color shapers, which will remove paint the same way I'm doing here. I just always happen to grab these um, spatulas I have laying around, they work great. I also started using a rag to rub out some areas. It reminds me of a technique I used in oil painting where the paint would be wet and I would wipe out certain areas. So I'm really going back to some techniques I haven't used in a really long time. So here you can see up close these areas where I've removed paint or rubbed paint off to get some transparency. I let that dry and now I felt like the colors were too jarring next to each other and you know the whole thing just felt busy so I decided I needed to tone it all down with one color I chose blue because I tend to gravitate towards blue and this is um I actually don't remember what color I think it's a uh, thalo blue green and I thinned it down with airbrush medium and I'm treating it like a glaze. So things definitely look more united now, but I was, I covered up a lot of what was happening. So I took some white paint and I applied it with a dry brush, but it was coming on kind of heavy. So I started to wipe it out. And when I wiped it out, it was going into all the cracks of all the texture that was under there, especially these um, pores. So I'm putting the paint on and then I'm rubbing it off, but I'm rubbing it into the texture here and the paint goes into all the cracks and crevices to really bring out the textures. So I got it up on the easel again so I could kind of assess. I mean, at this stage, I really don't want to go too far. I just want to start to refine it. So what I'm creating here are kind of these hazy, foggy areas where you get to look into, you know, what's behind there. It's like um, looking through the fog and being able to make out forms. I usually like work that shows the full value range. So because I had put blue on that black, I had knocked it down a bit. So I just went in, I wanted to create a little more depth by going back to that really dark black. And um, it definitely created or helped enhance that push-pull idea, which is things that are I'm coming forward and things that are receding. So I'm still playing with that shape, um, reinforcing that shape um, it, with the black and certain areas around that shape. So the shape would maybe come forward and the black would go, the negative space around the shape would go back in space. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you have any questions, leave them in the comments section. I'm happy to answer your questions, and if you'd like to see more videos, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.